Hi guys, Darren and Protopilot here. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a sliding tab that controls a scrolling view. So you would have seen this pattern in the Netflix app, is one of the places that I've kind of clocked it, and specifically in the what's new and what's hot section. So you've got that sliding tab at the, sliding tab at the top, which you can click on and, nav and it will kind of like navigate the scroll, the scroll view up and down, or you can just freely scroll and that affects the, the, the selection state of the tab. So I've kind of made a mocked up fake version of that screen and in this video we're going to build that. So let's have a look at the prototype, like the finished prototype that we're going to build and we can kind of just explore those features. So let's go over to the computer. Okay so here on the computer I've got here um, the finished version so we can see our new and hot section and I can come up to the scrolling tab here also I can scroll it. Um, I can also select this everyone's watching and that's going to automatically scroll my view to a particular card. I can also navigate back, so navigate back to coming soon here. Um, that's one way I can control it. So the other way I can control it is I can just kind of scroll up and you can see here when I get to that same item my tab bar automatically navigates up, navigates onto the everyone watching section and again I can scroll back down and it goes back to coming soon. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be building in this video. Um, we're gonna be doing it without any formulas, so we're kind of getting back to basics here. I wanna show you like some different ways of building things, um, because you've got lots of opportunities and um, capabilities in ProPi to build things in different ways. This is gonna be a no formula version. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I've got my starter Pi file open here. I've just created this design in Figma and exported it into Protopie. And the first thing I'm gonna make work is when I tap on this everyone's watching button, okay? So what we wanna do, we want to change the selected state of the button from white to red, and we want to scroll down to this second card here. Okay, so let's select our button, so tab watching, and then with that selected, I'm gonna add a tap trigger. And to this, I'm gonna add a scroll response, okay? Um, I'm going to target the tabs container. So initially I want to scroll the everyone's watching button just kind of like into the center of the screen. Okay, so I want to leave the default scrolls to, and I've kind of worked it out earlier, but it's going to be about 59 pixels. Okay, you can kind of mess around with the scroll view. Um, if I just select this scroll view here, you can, you can change the scroll here just quickly and you can kind of see where that's going to appear. Okay, so that looks about, looks about right. Um, right, now I want to change the color, so I'm going to add a color response. And I want my everyone's watching button, so that's tab watching. Let's search for that. Tab watching. And I'm going to change, let me just have a look at, yep, so basically I've added the color to the container. So if we just select the container here, we can see it's got a color of white currently. So I'm just going to change that to my red color, which is going to be FF6661. Okay, so we're changing the color of the, of the background. And that should basically change that color there, but we also want to change the coming soon button to white. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this color response. I'm gonna change the target to tab coming soon. And I'm just gonna change this to white. Okay. Okay, so that basically covers the selection of the two buttons. So if we just kind of test it over here, you can see that that's, obviously we've only done this button. So if I just restart it, you can see it's now changed the selection states. Um, obviously when I tap on this, I want to scroll the view up, okay? So to do that, we're gonna add another scroll view, another scroll response. Um, and we're gonna target the content. So the content is the container that has all the cards in it. Gonna find that. And again, I want to scroll this to a particular position. So um, again, I can use my little little cheat here, scroll, I'm gonna, just gonna start typing in some random values. 
Um, yeah, it'd be really useful if we could get this, um, if we could do this in, in real time. So a little call out to Protopy there. So you can see here, this is kind of like maybe a good position. So I've kind of like scrolled it by 400. Let's do that. Let's kind of type that in and see what that looks like. Okay, and I'm gonna leave the duration to 0 0.2 and I'm gonna leave the easing curve just to the ease in, ease out, but you can play with that if you want to. Okay, so let's give that a test. So I'm gonna come over here and hit everyone's watching and you can see that my scroll has now scrolled to that position. Okay, so that kind of completes the first section of the video. Um, and in the next section, um, I'm gonna set up the second tab. So it's gonna be very much kind of similar to what we've just done. Okay, so let's set up the second tab so we can actually tap back to come in soon. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate the first tap trigger, completely duplicate it. Okay, and I'm going to change the target. So we want to target tab, tab coming soon. I think that's what I've called it, yeah, there it is. And within the scroll response that we've got here, we want to obviously scroll the tabs back to zero. So we're scrolling back to the start. And we're kind of going through these responses, but it's changing the values back to the default. So what is red should now be white. And what is white should be now be red. FF6661 is the red we're using. And then finally on this scroll, we want to scroll back to zero. Okay, so let's just go over to preview and test that. So we can tap over to everyone's watching and then we can tap to coming soon. Now, obviously this is already a scroll view. Which is, which is something I set up in Figma. You can actually set up scroll views in Figma, but you can also just change it after you've exported your graphics in. So that's, a, that's worth pointing out. Both the content and tabs are already set up here. So for content, it's a vertical scroll. So we're, we're basically setting scroll page into scroll vertically. And for the tabs, it's a horizontal scroll. So it's scrolling horizontally. Okay, so that wraps up the first half of the video. So basically how we can navigate the scroll view by tapping on the tabs. In the next part, we're going to do the reverse. So we're going to be able to freely scroll up and down. And this time we want the tabs to move auto magically. Okay, so see you there. Okay, so in this final part of the video, we're going to do the last bit of interaction, which is to change the tabs based on us manipulating the scroll view, okay? So to do that, we're gonna use a trigger called range, okay? So range is a trigger that allows you to make UI changes based on certain points in a range of, of a value, okay? So we're gonna add a range trigger. So just come down to here, add range. And we're gonna target the content. Okay, and we're gonna target, we're gonna keep the default, which is we want to target the scroll property of the content. Okay, and we wanna add our first range value in. So when our range scrolls down to a certain value, which we're gonna put in 400, let's try that. We can play around with these values. Um, we're gonna do some stuff. So basically we're going to go to the first tap trigger and we basically, we don't want the, the scroll content response. So that's because we're already manipulating that. So we just want the first three. So we're gonna copy those and we're gonna paste that into our range, okay? Okay, and we're gonna then duplicate the whole range again. So this is for scrolling down. We now wanna deal with it when we scroll up. So we actually want to just, we're just gonna flip this kind of option here. So the, the first one was when the range was over a certain value. Now we're gonna look for when it's under a certain value, so when, when it's under 400. And we're gonna remove these these three tap triggers and we're gonna grab the three tap triggers, sorry, the three responses from the second tap trigger. Okay, so we copy those and we're gonna paste those in there. Okay, so that should be all we need to do. Let's come over to our scroll view. So we're gonna to start to scroll up and we can see as soon as we hit 400, our scroll, our tab scroll, too many scrolls going on in this video. Our tab is now scrolling to the second option and it's changing the selection state. And if we scroll back down, see as soon as we come out of that and we go into the range basically below 400, it's now switched back to coming soon. Now you could change that. You might think that that's a bit too quick, but you could obviously change that in the range here. So we could say if it's below 300, 
Let's try that. So we can go and scroll up and it, and it changes when we scroll down. We might want it to be actually when it kind of gets to maybe here. So let's just change that again to 200. So you can play around these values, see what kind of works for you, but effectively you get the, you get the idea of how it's kind of working. Now that's kind of, kind of just coming a little bit later, sort of at the point where we kind of get the content in view. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video of how you can create this scroll functionality using range. Um, and like I said, there's no formulas been used in this particular video. You could totally do this with formulas using detect trigger and stuff like that. Um, that's certainly something that we could explore in a future video. So if you wanna, if you wanna learn uh, about how you could do it in a very different way using formulas and detect, then do put a comment in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you liked it, please give it a like and it'll be really, you'd be really helping me out if you're not subscribing to this channel but you're watching a lot of my videos, that if you could just hit that subscribe button because the more subscriptions I get, the more we get the word out there and the more um, we can kind of get more people learning these cool interaction features within Protobuy. Okay, so that's it from me. I'll see you next time.